everybody, it's Tyler here at the Minnesota Signature Event checking in. They were on the dome last year, what an incredible performance, 229V Ace Robots. I'm so excited to talk more about their robot and what they're bringing here early on in the high stakes season. So much great stuff we're going through. We're going to be going through their dunk macro, which we'll learn more about how that works. And there's a lot of great design that really goes into this. I mean, really from this claw all the way through. If you saw the reveal video, I hope you're really excited for this one because there's so much to learn. Let's dive more here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Adam, we got to talk about you. When, when your reveal video came out, I mean, so much excitement just reverberated through the community on that. But I want to talk about some of your uh, process and strategy on how you came to this robot. So break down how you approached the high stakes season and how you came up with this product here. Yeah, absolutely. So basically when we started designing our robot, we really wanted to prioritize scoring on mobile goals. So we really thought about how we can get that. Uh, we really looked back at Tipping Point a lot. Uh, that was a previous VEX game where they had a very similar concept of grabbing mobile goals and scoring uh, rings onto it. So our back clamp is kind of modeled off of some teams on there. Uh, Jacob will talk about that later. And then our intake, uh, we kind of thought about like the same kind of like general design, but we use flex wheels because these rings are much flatter. And we really just wanted to make sure that we had a very consistent intake. And then the other thing that we looked at was wall stakes because we realized that uh, mobile goals will probably be throughout the match. You'll see a lot of teams just kind of filling up their mobile goals and it'll be fairly even there. So. Uh, we realized pretty early on that wall stakes would kind of be a tiebreaker there. Uh, so we really wanted to prioritize that. So we were looking at different designs that could grab and score two rings at a time on the wall stake. And this is the mechanism that we came up with. We call it the dunk mechanism. Uh, and basically the concept is just we wanted a very simple way to do that. We don't have to do anything special with our intake. We just grab a ring with the claw, grab one ring with the intake, and then we use what we call the dunk macro to actually perform that. I want to ask you real quick on the wall stakes here. You know, when we look at kind of the, the meta of the game, it starts to evolve through. You know, you're right. We're seeing a lot of just the mobile goal play on that. Do you see that wall stakes are really going to come into play later on during the season especially? Yeah, we do. We've even had a few matches here where we won the match just based on having wall stakes. We had the wall stake advantage, and that was the difference that won us the match. I think that's going to become even bigger throughout the season as uh, teams catch up and mobile goals are even more uh, kind of very comparable between teams. I think wall stakes are going to continue to be that kind of tiebreaker. Let's dive into some of the aspects of this robot. Jacob, talk to me more about, you know, of course you got the back clamp uh, going through, awesome intake as well that I want to cover, and, and just lots of great things on this robot. So break down some of these attributes. Yeah, sure. I'll start off with our back clamp. It's really simple. We use 25 millimeter uh, pistons on the back clamp. It's also as, uh, assisted with a band as well. And we have these little bent standoffs. It's just to perfectly morph around the goal. You know, so these funnels just to perfectly guide it for autonomous and driver. It's a simple, just little button press. And it goes right up. Uh, right into our hood trajectory. So uh, moving on to our, like, our hood mechanism and our intake, really we spent the most time probably tuning our first stage in our hood, which it required a lot of different geometries of where the hood is angled and how much tension uh, these pivoting uh, joints on our intake take. So I can demonstrate our intake working on the mobile goal. You want to push a ring? It goes right on there. So we, you see it, it's very consistent. May I press the wrong button? Um, so yeah, it's just a very consistent, and we honestly chose the flex wheel intake over some hook intakes you may see here. And this is mainly because of the fact that if your mobile goal isn't in the perfect position with the hook intake, it will typically kind of miss and not fully get on there, or maybe uh, overshoot it, undershoot it. We found a, we have tested hook, and we found a lot of inconsistencies with that. So that's why we switched over to a flex wheel hood rather, because our goal can be like in a variety of different uh, offset spots, and it can still work efficiently for our driver and autonomous. One of the things I, I really like, by the way, when you uh, were holding onto that mobile goal there, a lot of teams we've uh, talked to or seen on the field, their first ring that gets on doesn't quite always get on right. So it seems like you got both your angle and your spacing down really well. Did you have to do a lot of testing to get there? Of course, yes. I probably at least had like four different prototypes of this hood. Um, just messing with how far it should go into, uh, far how far it should reach onto the top of the mobile goal and how far back it should be behind the hood. And we found kind of the sweet spot was like the flex wheels being slightly behind the top of this goal was just the sweet spot for the rings to fully get on. And also if it didn't, the ring would be angled and sort of 
like kind of like in this way. And if it ever did do this, the ring behind it will just push it back down, which is not a big deal. So we really just want to, we tuned out the fact that the intake cannot do this because this would be detrimental to our intake because it would actually block it. So yeah, that's what the tuning came down for our hood. And I can move on to our, our claw if you want. So um, our, how our claw works is it's very simple. We have a two piston pivot on it. And what's unique about it is we actually have it, have it pivoting on our intake rather on a separate secondary arm. It's, and we uh, are able to deploy the claw with a simple little macro right here where it just drops and opens. Again, simply a ring can enter this claw, close and, and put it back in. And, what the, and the purpose of this is so that it brings the ring out and out of the way of the intake just for our intake to be able to intake rings when we have a ring up here. And then uh, I can talk about the actual dunk. Davis can actually talk about the real dunk macro uh, paired with this function right here. So Davis, when we look at uh, on your robot here, we talked about that dunk mechanism, right? So I'd love to hear more about what you're doing for that. I love seeing automation uh, with robots. Talk about how some of your macros and your sensors work for that. Sure, yeah. So the first macro I'll cover is actually our dunk macro right here. Uh, how this works is it uses an optical sensor right over here to basically keep this ring outtake to the perfect point. So you can see as I push it back in, it's actually making sure that it stays right there, which is very consistent and reliable for when we're trying to score on those wall stakes. And so the second part of that macro is definitely our lift. We use a rotation sensor right over here on our lift, which tracks the position of the lift as it goes up and down. And then the lift controller itself is what I would call an asynchronous state-based lift controller. So it uses a proportional loop to control the height of the lift in like degrees, and we can set it to custom states that I've defined. Like we have an alliance stake height, we have a wall stake height, down height, a lot of different things. And so it's basically really helpful because I can just tell it, go to this state and then run this macro, and it works very consistently and lifts every time. And then some other cool things that we use sensors for, obviously uh, we use odometry and PID for our autons. So we have an inertial sensor over here on the bot on the side. And then underneath the bot, we have two tracking wheels, which I think Jacob can show you here. We have one uh, parallel one and one perpendicular one. The perpendicular one is mainly used to avoid drift on our robot since we're not using any traction wheels. And then the parallel one obviously counts our forward and backwards movement. And those two have worked very well and very successfully in tracking our position accurately. And I think we've been pretty happy overall with how our match autos have gone as a result. How do you see uh, your match autos evolving maybe into the next event? I think definitely we're going to do some more curved movements. And it's not because we haven't been happy with how this has been going. It's more just because we want to save as much time as possible and really push the boundaries of what's possible in our autonomous. Well, Ace Robotics, looking forward to seeing, of course, how you do here at the Minnesota Signature Event. But thank you for being such an inspirational team to the community. I mean, so many teams, obviously, look look to see what you have to bring to help them create their machines. And I think that's got to be a great feeling to have uh, for yourself. So, of course, we can't wait to see your evolution throughout the season. Uh, so make sure you tune in to this team for future stuff as well, too. And good luck here at the Minnesota Signature Event. Thanks thank a lot. You. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.